If you're using Dataverse, model-driven apps, or Dynamics 365, you need to understand data models. Copilot isn't good at this yet, because here's what it recommends me today, but here's what I actually need. Don't worry, this is our most in-depth tutorial to date because we wanna make sure you walk away from this ready to build any data model you need because it's critical to the foundation of any app. Let's pretend my company sells cars and I wanna track all the purchases in Dataverse. If you know you're gonna be building tables, it's better to skip the designer and hop over here under solutions create a new solution, and I'm gonna give it a name called Vehicles. If you don't know solutions, I got another video on it. So for now, let's click Create. Now you might think AI can help you, but you still gotta know what you're doing. Watch, if I go in here and hit New, and then go to Table, and then let's say we're gonna make a new table. We could start with a Copilot prompt, and I type in, I need to track vehicles, information like make and model, and who purchased them, and click Generate. Copilot gave us a table like this, where we have vehicle, the model, the make, and a purchaser is a look up to the purchaser table. We're gonna break this all down and why this actually isn't a great model. Let's start with the vehicles. I made the same table in Excel. Make, model, number of seats, seems great. Now, the ultimate question is, should you have multiple tables or one big table and how do you decide? The first giveaway is, do you have any repeating data? If you see here, we're having the same values appear again and again. This is a red flag. We should put make in its own table. Why? Well, what if Honda decides to change the name of their company to Anaconda? Now you got to go and change it in a bunch of different places. It doesn't seem hard here, but imagine if you had thousands of records, tens of thousands, and multiple columns. This is going to be a nightmare. Or worse, what if your users simply spell the names wrong? Instead, what you want is to make a separate maker table, and this is a lookup to this other table. So now, if I change this to Anaconda, it will change all of them and I don't have to worry about it. Everything is all good. So in Dataverse, I'm gonna click New, Table, I'm gonna go to Advanced, and I'm just gonna call this one Vehicles, and click Save. And then I'm gonna make another table, call it make, click save. And to do my lookup under vehicle, under columns, I'm gonna make a new column and I'm gonna call it make. And this one's gonna be a lookup to my make table. You could also call it manufacturer, save it. And real quick, let's just throw this into an app just so we can see some data. I added my tables, there it is. And then on my vehicle form, Let's just add make to it and publish that. So now if I make a new vehicle like an F-150, and then I can choose Honda. Now I have my vehicles here, and then I have my makes in a separate table. The other advantage of separating is if make has other columns you wanna track, like the country, if you kept this all in one table, you'd have to put this all here too. And then again, you'd have repeated data. And then another sign is you will notice that you have two columns that really belong together. When that starts happening, start thinking about putting it in another table. Now, this kind of relationship is called a one-to-many. One maker has multiple vehicles underneath them, such as Honda has multiple different cars. However, a Civic does not have multiple makers. It just has one. And we can visualize that. If we hop into our solution and then we go under make, we go under forms and we go to the main form under components, I can select this item called a subgrid. And then under here, I can look for vehicles right at the bottom. And then I click done. And if I click save and publish, if I go to Honda and click it, I will see all the vehicles that belong to Honda because one maker has many vehicles. If I try to do the same thing on the vehicle table and choose subgrid, it wouldn't work. I'm not gonna see make here because again, it can only have one. You're probably familiar with a table that automatically comes with your system called contacts. We can reuse this table to track who's buying what car. Here's a common mistake. You have your contacts table and you decide to add a lookup to the car table to store who's buying what. So that would mean you go over into contacts and you make a new column called vehicle and you make it a lookup to the vehicle table and it seems like a good idea. And then now 
if I want to track that Tanisha bought a, I don't know, F-150, I can do that. Seems fine. But what if Tanisha is rich and can afford more than one car? How would you solve that? So then you might be tempted to think, oh, I'll just make a second look up here and I'm going to call it vehicle two. And then you're going to do something like this. And if she wants a third car, another look up like, no, that's ludicrous. Who was also featured in a car movie. Anytime you see two lookups to the same table, that's a warning sign you should do something different. You don't want to be creating tables like this. What you want is a many-to-many -many relationship where one contact can have multiple vehicles. The opposite of one maker having multiple vehicles, now you have many contacts having many vehicles. Unlike a one-to-many, one maker, many vehicles, you now have many contacts who can have many vehicles. To make a many-to-many, -many, you go under relationships under contact, or you can go under vehicle, it doesn't matter. You click new relationship and you select many-to-many. -many. And under here, you choose vehicle. I always find the default names, they give you a bit insane, so I like to shorten them and click done, and we should delete these. And if we hop into the form, and under components, I choose that subgrid, and in here, I look for vehicles right at the bottom, click done. I'm gonna publish that. If we go back, something else cool happens. If we go under vehicle, and under forms, remember when we go under table, we can't choose maker because there's only one? Well, because there's multiple contacts who can have multiple vehicles, we can choose contacts here and we can add it to the form. We could call it contacts. We could also just call it purchases and click save and publish. So now if I click into one of the contacts, I see vehicles over here and I can click the three dots, add an existing vehicle, pick whichever vehicles I want. She can buy many at a time. They all appear here. And if I click in a vehicle and choose one, you'll see at the bottom, I see all the people who have made the purchase. And conversely, if I click on that person, I see that they have the same related vehicle. Well, let's pause because this is slightly confusing and break it down. We have a contacts table and a vehicles table and this many to many relationship allows us to have multiple contacts having multiple vehicles. But something else is happening in the background. Dataverse actually gave us another table that we can call purchase or we can call it vehicle contact. The point is this third table is actually storing which contact bought which vehicle. This little hidden table, you can forget exists because you can't really get access to it. For instance, here I have contact make vehicle. If I go under tables and I try to add an existing table and I type in vehicle or contact or purchase, none of those exist, but this table is very real. In fact, if you open up vehicle and we go to relationships and we click into contact vehicle, you'll see that the table name is called contact vehicle. It's very real. If you look behind the scenes, this table totally exists. This tool, Azure Data Studio, lets me see all my Dataverse tables even more so than here. I'm gonna change this to TOT make. So we're not looking at vehicles. If I run that, here's all my makes. And let's go find this hidden table here. You're gonna notice when I run this query, it gives very, very few columns. You'll see we have a contact ID, we have a vehicle ID, and then we have a contact vehicle ID, which is just a unique number for every single one of these rows. So if we snag this particular contact ID, I bet it's Tanisha. So I'm gonna go back to our system. In here at the very end, if I paste this contact ID, Sure enough, it's Tanisha Jackson. So some of the car she owns, a Civic F-150, a Focus. So that's one, two, three cars. And her ID starts with a D. So we have one, two, three records for her. And then if I take this vehicle ID, it's gonna be a Ford F-150 or a Civic or one of them. So if I go in here and I paste this at the end, yeah, it's a Focus. When you take the time to look inside, you'll see there's so much more happening. Like if you look inside of me, you'll see that I'm mostly made of smoothies, IT information, musicals. I like to be in America.
I wanted to show you that because this many to many table that comes from the out of the box many to many relationship is incredibly limited. These columns is all that it gives you. It can only store the relationship between two tables and no extra information. So let's say I wanted to store, I don't know, maybe how much this person paid for the car. I can't add this cost column to this table. It won't let me. And I can't really store it here because, well, in this case, the CRV one time it cost 8,000 and a different time when they bought it cost 7,000. So we can't track it there. That's a huge reason this out of the box, many to many relationship isn't great. If we wanted to do this, we have to make a custom many to many relationship. So I would come to my solution and then I would make a brand new table and I could call it vehicle contact. I can call it purchase, click save. Now under columns, the first I would need is a lookup to the contact. And then the next column is a lookup to the vehicle. And then I take these two columns, I add them to the vehicle contact form. And on my forms, I had the out of the box, many to many relationship. And I also added another subgrid for our brand new custom many to many relationship. And that points to vehicle contacts. This one over here just pointed straight to contacts for the out of the box. So originally I just added Tanisha to the Civic vehicle and then that shows that she bought it, great. But now I'm gonna try it again with our custom many to many and I'm gonna click new vehicle contact. It auto populated Civic for me. And then in here, I'm gonna choose Tanisha. I'm gonna say that she paid seven grand for it. Now this name column is just default. I have to populate it with something so I can say Civic Tanisha. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how you can auto populate that later. So stick around. So now when I save and close this, this one, I can't store cost in any way. All of these columns just belong to the contact. But down here, I have Civic, Tanisha, and how much she paid. And I could add even more columns if I want to. And conversely, if I click on Tanisha's record, I have the out-of-the-box many-to-many, which won't let me store any other columns like price. But if we keep scrolling, there's Tanisha, there's the Civic, there's the price she paid. So you might be thinking, whoa, custom many-to-many -many is so much better than this out-of-the-box many-to-many. Who uses this? Side note, if Dataverse is a big part of your job, we got a free free training below that goes into even more concepts we couldn't cover here, plus Power Automate, plus Power App. It's all about solution architecture and just making flexible solutions. Check it out below. First of all, it's huge advantage is that in terms of clicks, it's much fewer clicks. It's just boom, add existing, choose the car, done. Versus this, you have to go to new, you have to populate some of these fields and then you have to set them, and then you have to hit save and close. You have to open this new form, you have to populate some of the fields, you have to hit save and close. It's just a few more steps, and it can be annoying for your users. But the out-of-the-box has even more limitations that we haven't seen. For instance, if I want this flow to run anytime somebody purchases a vehicle or the vehicle contact record is created, I can go over here, select my table, super easy. And then if I want to go fetch all of my purchases all my vehicle contacts, I just choose my table here and use the list rows action and I'm done. But if I am using the out of the box, many to many that comes with this system, that whole TOT contact vehicle, that table isn't an option for me to select here. That means whenever somebody adds a vehicle to a contact, I can't trigger off of that. So this step won't work. If I want to use list rows, can't just select vehicle contact. I have to do this weird syntax where I spell the schema name and then I put the word set at the end of it. For some reason that will work. And if I want to dynamically create a purchase or a vehicle contact record, I could just go here and add a row, select vehicle contact, and it works great. And then if I want to create dynamically uh, out of the box, many to many, unlike my simple add a new row here, I can't use this. I have to use this relate row action and then use some crazy URL syntax to do it. I mean, it's totally surmountable. It's just kind of annoying to work with. But the ultimate deal breaker is the lack of trigger. Now, I'm sure in the comments, any advanced people are going to say, oh, you can write a plugin off of a many-to-many -to, -many to then trigger Power Automate, but now you're getting very unnecessarily complicated. 
So you might be thinking again, if this works so poorly with Power Automate and this works great, again, why would I use this? Most often I use it for when I don't need metadata like cost or something and I just kind of want to use it more as a tag. For instance, rather than storing purchases, if I wanted to store maybe the vehicle color, like if I had a colors table, I could use a menu to menu to store if a car comes in multiple different colors. I don't need any other information like cost. That would be a good candidate for the out of the box menu to menu. Oh, and just as you were thinking, oh, colors is a good reason for out of the box menu to menu. There's one more limitation with it. Let's say you had a giant spreadsheet with a bunch of vehicle contacts and you want to upload this into Dataverse. Well, if you're using the out of the box many to many relationship, there, there's no place to upload this Excel. You would have to build some kind of a job. But if you made your own many to many like vehicle contacts, you can come over here and do import from Excel and then do one of these options and you're good. I like this one because it makes it so I don't have to work as much and the end user can go deal with the data. One more thing you should consider, besides using separate tables for one-to-many or many-to-many, -many, consider choices. So maybe you don't have that many manufacturers. What you could do is come down here and then select a choice column and add some choices. And this can work great. So instead of a lookup, you have a choice and it does the same thing. Oh, and if you want to make it a many to many, like one vehicle can maybe be made by multiple manufacturers, just do select multiple choice is allowed. So now instead of using a lookup, your users can come down here and just select whichever one they want. Super easy. The only huge downside of doing this is if these values change a lot or there's a lot of them, this UI becomes rather unbearable. And also, now your users are going to have to ask you to change it every time. Like, let's say there's a new manufacturer, like they start selling Mercedes. The user can't go in here and add Mercedes as an option. But if you're using lookups, they can go in and simply create their own. Let's compare everything we just said. So we got three kinds of many-to-many -many relationships. We got the out-of-the-box one, the choices, and the custom many-to-many. The out-of-the-box one, the UI is better, less clicking. Users can create their own options, but then you can't do your own columns, no up power automate. It doesn't do Excel imports. Choices are cool because you get a really nice UI. It's quick. Uh, users can't create their own options. It does work with power automate. And there's some really cool filtering you can do. I don't even have time to talk about that. If you're interested in that, check out that training. The next one is our custom many-to-many -many, where you can add all the columns you want. It triggers off of Power Automate nicely. Users can create their own options. Also does Excel import. It's just slightly more clicks than the out-of-the-box one.